The title of the paper that I will present is a Structural Integrity Assessment of Pressure Equipment by Acoustic Emission and Data Fractal Analysis. Here are the list of the authors. I will premise a brief description of the experimental method used in our investigation. When a load is applied to a material, statically or dynamically, elastic waves arise inside. They can be captured by piezoelectric sensors, registering in this way the changes that occur as deformation, dislocation motion, crack initiation, or propagation, and so on. It is known that in seismology there is a direct correspondence between the acoustical emission and the law of Gutenberg-Richter that describe the process of fracture of earthcraft. For this, since from the 50s of the previous century, many research efforts were devoted to apply this technique to study damage and fracture of engineer materials. Nowadays, the acoustical emission is a well-stated experimental method used in several structural fields as deformation and damaging of materials, fracture mechanics, composite materials, concrete and rock mechanics, fatigue of metals, life assessment and corrosion monitoring. Among the most popular applications there are tanks, crane, bridge and concrete structure. In particular, Acoustic emission signals furnish two kinds of information. First, the signal level is proportional to the stress acting on the structure. Basing on this, it is possible to define several analysis techniques to evaluate the energy of each individual event or the cumulated energy of all events beside the number of them. The second kind of information is related to the process of damaging in the material, where the accumulation of internal structure modifications due to loading originate a specific sequence of acoustic events during time. It is clear that analyzing acoustic emission is a complex task, and several procedures were proposed during the last decades. One of the mathematical tools that can manage and display the signals is the fractal analysis, and for this I will recapitulate the brief this approach. The term fractal was introduced by Maldenbrot and derives from Latin fractus. In few words, the fractals are considered mathematical objects with a fractional dimension. The fractals are currently applied in computer graphics and signal analysis due to some interesting properties. The fractals have many features in common with the irregular structures present in natural environment and phenomena. In particular, it is possible to introduce the self-similarity property. A self-similar object is exactly or approximately similar to a part of itself independently from the scale. Many objects in the real world are statistically self-similar. Parts of them show the same features at many scale. Self-similarity is a typical property of fractals. Scale invariance is an exact mathematical form of self-similarity, where at any magnification there is a small piece of the object that is similar to the whole. In particular, typical examples are the Noak snowflake, the external surface of a cauliflower, or the shape of a coast eroded by the sea and the wind action. It is possible to demonstrate that the acoustical emission signals are due to the superposition of self-similar patterns 
and don't self-similar ones. To distinguish the two parts, it is necessary to use particular methods of analysis. Among them, we use the box counting method to evaluate the fractal dimension, and this approach is explained in the following slide. If we consider the acoustic emission signals as a fractal, when its dimension is large, we have a perfectly disordered emission. The sources have a random distribution. On the contrary, if the fractal dimension is small, the emission is ordered, and this means that there is a source or a cluster of source that release energy at the highest level compared to the others. From a mechanical point of view, this occurs when a material is under a damaging process. The method to measure the fractal dimension of a signal during the time is the box counting method. The rule to apply the box counting method are if we have a discrete time signal S in a time interval, divide the interval without a superposition in n time legs named ruler. Define then a threshold for the intensity of the signal, define a counter, consider each time lag. When we have at least a signal above the threshold in a time lag, we add one to the counter, and so on for all the time interval. Plot the counter versus M in a log-log graph, named usually Richardson's diagram, and then define the interpolating curve C. The slope of the interpolated curve is the fractal dimension changed in sign. The Richardson diagram show how the fractal dimension changes with the evolution of the process. If the fractal dimension is 1, there is no correlation between the events, and then the system has a completely disordered pattern of sources. As the fractal dimension lowers, the system evolves toward a better organized structure, and when it is null, it is perfectly ordered. From the damaging process point of view, this means that the sources of acoustic emission are appearing all around the defect that approach to the collapse. In this paper, we used the acoustical emission through the fractal analysis and the box counting method to study the damaging process of underground pressurized tanks in order to check if this approach and the usual procedure based on the acoustical emission are in agreement. Here are two figures with a typical barrier tank and the drawing of the case examined. Since about 15 years, the requalification of small underground tanks is based on the inhaled ISPES procedure that uses the acoustic emission analysis. The tank is charged with a pressure having a linear time gradient up to reaching 16 bars at which the test will be complete. During the test, the acoustical emission signals are recorded and then analyzed. One of the most interesting features of the procedure is that the tank can remain buried during the test as the sensors are applied in the part emerging from the ground. So, the acoustic emission signals recorded by the pair of acoustical emission channels must be processed in order to extract information employed to calculate two indexes able to give the measure of the structural integrity of the tanks. The two parameters are synthetic quality index and time history index. The two parameters are then combined to form the unique index gamma that allows classifying the vessel. The algorithm to compute this index was property of INAIL 
and was tested and certified by an extended experimental campaign. The two main classes are class 1, no significant activity is detected, class 2, a significant acoustic emission activity is detected with one of the four cases in terms of gamma max or number and energy of Evans. The vessel included in class 2 cannot be operated. We tested three underground tanks. We pressurized the tanks according to the inner ease procedure in order to execute the comparison of the results obtained with the two methods. Here are the properties of the material and the dimension of the tank. We recorded the acoustic emission signals during the test. The analysis of them was performed by the box counting method. The results of test of the tanks number one and number two are in the following figures, where are shown together the fractal dimensions versus time and the gamma index versus time. The tanks number one and number two passed the check as gamma is minus than zero dot 95. The box counting method gave a fractal dimension between 0 0.75 and 1. For this we can conclude that no damage is detected with a good agreement with the inhal procedure. The results for the third tank are in the, this figure. The tank number three did not pass the check as gamma is greater than 0 0.95. Moreover, during the test, the fractal dimension suddenly decreased to a value of 0 0.35. This is an undoubted sign of a relevant structure damaging process. However, after a valley, the dimension of fractal grows back towards a valley near to one. Though a damage process is active, the material is, is still able to sustain the applied pressure due to rearrangement of the stresses caused, probably by a small area of plasticization. As the damage is irreversible, Further increments of the pressure originate an increase of the damaging rate and a decrease of the fractal dimension up to the collapse. Basing on all that we exposed, it is possible to conclude the fractal analysis of acoustic emission signal by means of wax counting method is particularly effective for monitoring structure as already reported in the reference available in bibliography. By this technique, it is possible to get a lot of information on the damage of structure, both under static and dynamic load history. The fractal dimension is a measuring tool of the random disorder of the acoustical emission. It is able to show when a local damaging process is active and how it evolves both in static and fatigue load conditions. A sudden decrease of fractal dimension shows that there is a zone with important acoustical emission events that is a method to identify and to monitor a defect from the nucleation through the growth and the final collapse. Both the methods use it fractal analysis and box counting method and uh, acoustical emission and ISPES inhal procedure are in good agreement. Thank you for your attention.